30 years ago, our next guest lost his mother to a drunk driver. Coincidentally, around the same time, he was taking a class that encouraged him to write a letter to someone who touched his life, and he chose his mother. A few days after receiving that letter, she was killed. That experience led to his, working, to his work encouraging people to figure out who they would write a letter to. It is a story he tells in the book, The Last Letter, Embracing Pain to Create a Meaningful Life. Andy Shalev joins us in studio this morning. Welcome, yeah. Andy. Uh, take me back to that time 30 years ago when you, when you penned that letter uh, to your mother, not knowing what would happen soon after. Yeah. Um it's funny because every time I share it, 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 you almost feel the emotion of that time. So I always keep Kleenex with me because it's, 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 it's a real experience. But the, what I realized at that moment was that there was, in allowing myself to imagine that my mom might not be there, it allowed me to write in like a beauty that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to touch. So mm -hmm. basically, even though I had no reason to believe she wouldn't be there, I just shared with her exactly how I would have written if I if had known that she wasn't going to be there. Share with our viewers why you did this in the first place. Did this trip? or The, the letter. Um, the letter was, I was taking a sociology of death class, which is, was kind of as a freshman. Oh, it sounds like fun. <laughs> exactly. How, how, how I came to that is kind of amazing as a freshman. But in that class, it's the, the, the apparent mortality that we often don't want to look at because it's just too difficult was just right in front of my face. And in that moment, it, instead of kind of doing what one might do, which is move away from the pain, I went into it and said, wow, what does it compel me to do? And then in, in that moment, I just wrote. After your mother was killed in that uh, tragic accident, mm -hmm. you went into depression. Yeah. And, and not for a year or two. You, you write about being decades. Yeah. Um, what made you suddenly confront that? What happened in your life? You know, I, what I see often is that we, there's patterns that repeat themselves. And my pattern was I would get into relationships and I couldn't receive love because it was just too hard. I mean, once you've lost someone that dear to you, it's almost in loving someone, you risk losing that love again. So for me, I, I saw over and over again, the closer I got in a relationship, the harder it was for me to embrace that love and then it would somehow always not work out. So at some point, I started looking in the mirror and say the only thing consistent in, in these relationships was me. So it was like, Andy, are you really going to take that seriously or are you going to continue to just make the same mistakes over and over again? In the yeah. process of uh, writing your book, uh, do you think that there are a lot of mistakes that ordinary people make when it comes to, uh, I'll tell them I love them when I see them next time, or I'll wait for the next opportunity to do it. Yeah. Uh, I get the sense from the book that the time is always now to say these things. That, that's really, I mean, what, what I did when I started this is I asked people on the internet, I said, please, will you write letters to a loved one? And basically there was just no response. So uh, that was only four months ago that this, this whole journey began. There's now 60 locations across the U.S. And, mm -hmm. and at that moment, I realized if I don't show up and I don't sit in a session and let them see my pain, they won't really be able to feel their own and feel the sh that kind of urgency to write. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Looking back decades later, is there anything you would have changed in that letter today that wasn't there? at the time. You're going to make me cry now. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'll miss you. I think when, before you lose someone, you don't actually know. You don't know how, how much it's going to hurt, how much, however you prepare for it. Mm -hmm. And I think the 20 years that I moved away from that pain, clearly, it didn't serve me. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, I'm going to be in group after group, and you know, in those groups, I am who I am. So if I feel emotional, I just let myself be emotional, and it can be, you know, it's there's some beauty in it. People also are not sure. actually seeing. Yeah. I've never felt closer to my mom than when I allowed myself to to cry because I didn't allow myself for so many years. Yeah, so I know just, losing someone very close to me, and finally, 18 years later after it happened, you know, I lost my emotions and it only benefited me later in life yeah. to this day. Yeah. So, Andy, thank you for sharing. Um, you what a wonderful idea, the last letter. Uh, yeah. Andy's actually going to be hosting a workshop tonight in San Francisco. We do have more information about that on our website at ktvu.com. Look for it in the web link section under the Mornings on 2 tab. You can also find it on the KTVU uh, mobile app. Uh, Andy Shaliff, the last letter, Embracing Pain to Create a Meaningful Life. Thank you for sharing your thank story. You both. We'll be right back after Thanks, the break. Sir. Thank you.